Okay. Uh, I was going to put up a video about energy communication tonight, but I've changed my mind um, because of this. Uh, I watched a video the other day called Nicer Charts the Area Around a bl New Black Hole. Um, but it was their, uh, their explanation of what's happening um, confirms uh, one of my videos, which is a planetary Z pinch point formation and how and why it occurs by double helix energy flow, uh, electricity and electromagnetism um, through matter. Now this is the video, it's called Planetary Z Pinch Point Formation. I will leave the link to it down below. I'm not going to go through the paper. I just want you to look at where the uh, top sun is and the uh, that's called a wave scroll that comes out. Um, but I want you to look at the arrows and the direction of travel. It says DH, DH, above and below the wave scroll of energy. Now those arrows on either side of the scroll roll back into the scroll. This is how I've said the electromagnetic field works on many videos. So again, you'll have to go and watch all them other videos about why the direction is going into each roll so that eventually you get that big X at the begin at the end there where uh, the wave is pulled into a string and then um, where the wave scroll is you would get a planetary formation such as a sun or a star or a black hole or a planet because they're all formed the same way now I'm going to play the video in a second uh, it's only a little bit of it so I'm going to talk over it until we get to the piece where they show the black hole pulling in matter from the accretion disk and I want and what she says is quite bizarre she says magnetism and gravity do this well m nobody has ever explained how magnetism or gravity does that and I've kind of debunked gravity with my explanation of electromagnetism as to why it does that um, so they don't explain it so they don't explain how it's going in from the top and in from the bottom because if it was a rotating torus uh, material wouldn't do that. It would fly out of the top and go into the bottom and supposedly reciprocate. But they show it going in at the top and in at the bottom. Um, they've never explained how magnetism or gravity does that, but I have. So anyway, here's the movie. Hi, my name is Erin Kara, and I'm an astrophysicist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center and the University of Maryland. I was part of a team who used X-rays to map the environment around a recently discovered black hole learning new details about how those surroundings evolve as material swirls closer to the black hole. We made the breakthrough using observations from NASA's Neutron Star Interior Composition Explorer, or NICER, on the International Space Station. NICER let us watch a flare of light from the area around a black hole called Maxi J1820 plus 070, or J1820 for short. This stellar mass black hole is around 10 times the sun's mass and funnels gas away from a neighboring star and into a dense ring of material called an accretion disk. Magnetic and now I've just put the arrows on there because that's the direction of travel. To millions of degrees, hot enough to glow in X-rays. We think the flare magnetic and gravitational forces compress so and heat the gas. So she's describing an accretion degrees, disk which is a torus. To glow in X-rays. We think the flare Okay, so what I'm about to show um, needs explaining because she says it's an accretion disk. So here's the explanation. An accretion disk is a structure, often a circumstellar disk, formed by blah, 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 around a massive central body, blah, 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 typically a star, friction, blah. Circumstellar disk. Well, what's one of those? A circumstellar disk or circumstellar disk is a torus. So there we go. Torus, pancake or ring-shaped accumulation of matter composed of gas dust. Uh, the only get way you get this is due to an energy field, um, an electromagnetic energy field. Um, so now um, we can have a look at one. And if you've ever seen a torus, it looks like this. And this is the first clear image of an accretion disk surrounding a young star in 2017. So you know it's a credible source from phys.org. Um, now, if you've ever seen a rotating torus, um, like say in a microwave.
Okay, so we can all see that it's a rotating torus. And so there's no way material can be pulled in from uh, the top and the bottom, as I show here, because this rotates in one direction. It's a torus. It has to. So, so a torus is not an Ouroboros field, which is an electromagnetic rotating field, which meets at an equator, so that it can have in-pull at the North Pole and in-pull at the South Pole, because there's two separate sets of magnetic fields sticking out of each pole, because it doesn't reciprocate, because if it did reciprocate, it couldn't go in at both poles. It would go out at one pole and in at the other, and that is matter flow. Only matter reciprocates. Energy fields do not reciprocate unless it's a pile of smoke which forms a torus within a microwave electromagnetic field. So, there we go. Um, they're telling you about magnetism and gravity um, with words, uh, with this vague impression in your head of things falling, spinning into things, um, but a torus doesn't do that. And they've described an accretion disk as a torus. And we just saw one rotating. And the very fact that it's rotating in one direction means it can't in-pull at both poles. All right, thanks very much. My name is Lee. And I follow the Christ. And I'll put the links to that guy's video down in the description. Thanks a lot. Have a great weekend. Bye.